So now we get to move on to a new set of tools. We've talked about the move tool, that's the very top tool in our toolbar. We're now gonna move on to the selection tools in Photoshop. Namely, the lasso tools, the marquee tools, and the quick selection and magic wand tools. Now these selection tools are absolutely fundamental in Photoshop. In fact, selections are absolutely fundamental in Photoshop. You can tell a Photoshop newbie by how bad their selections are. And we've all seen bad Photoshop jobs where they kind of cut something out and maybe put it on a different background and they're not fooling anybody. You can see bad white lines, looks almost like they ripped something out of a newspaper. Those are bad selections. If you're making bad selections, you're not using Photoshop well. The bulk of this class is gonna be practicing and getting better at making good selections. In fact, your midterm is just an advanced composite image where you have to make all sorts of isolations and selections. And the goal is to, to fool me into thinking that you didn't actually cut them out. It was all meant to be there. In this first tutorial though, we're gonna break down the marquee tool. And the marquee tool is pretty simple. It draws a fence, so to speak, a selection fence around any part of your image. Now the downside to marquees is that they work only in basic shapes, squares and rectangles and then circles or kind of ovals, and that's it. So we're limited with our marquee tools, but the option bar begins to open up new possibilities for this tool. So let's jump in and I'll show you guys how to use the marquee tool. Now I've gone ahead and made a blank web large artboard to start. Why don't you guys go ahead and go to file new and make a new web large artboard. Now to learn about our marquee tool, we need to have something inside of our artboard that we can begin to interact with. So let's choose a color in our color picker window. I'm gonna choose a nice blue. And let's use our paint bucket tool, which again lives right underneath the gradient tool to fill our layer one with color. So now we have something we can start to work with. So let's come up to our marquee tool. Let's click and hold our marquee tool and let's talk about what we're seeing here. We have a rectangular marquee tool, an elliptical marquee tool, and then single row and single column marquee tools that we're not gonna talk about in this class. Let's start with our rectangular marquee tool. Now the marquee tool is great for making selection fences. To use it, we simply click and hold our mouse and drag the mouse out and release. Go ahead and make a rectangle on yours. When you release the mouse, you see this dancing dotted line pattern going around the edges. Photoshop calls this the dancing ants. I call it the dancing dotted line. Either way, whenever you see this inside of Photoshop, it means there's a selection made. So we'll be seeing this all throughout the next few exercises. So once we've made a selection, it really just comes down to what do we wanna do with that selection? And there's a lot of things that we could do with it. Let me walk you through a few of them. First, we could simply hit delete on the keyboard. If we hit delete on the keyboard, we've now cut a hole out of our blue, allowing us to see through it now to transparency. So we could always just hit delete and erase whatever is inside of our selection. Go ahead and hit Control Z and bring back what you just cut out. Aside from deleting what's in a selection, we can relocate or move what's inside of a selection. Let's come back up to our move tool that we've learned earlier. Notice when you hover over the area inside of your selection, we see a black arrow with a scissors icon next to it. If I click and drag this now, I have removed, I've lifted and cut out the area that was inside of that selection, leaving once again a hole in its place. I'm gonna go ahead and let go and hit Control Z to put that back. The other thing we can do is fill the selection with color. So let's get out our paint bucket tool again and let's choose a new color for our background color. I'm gonna choose a nice yellow. Toggle your background color to be your foreground color. 
and then simply click inside of the selection to fill it with color. So we can make selections as kind of like trace lines and then fill that with color. So we can erase, we can move or cut out, or we can fill a selection with color. Now go ahead and hit Control Z for me. Now if we've made a selection, we should learn how to invert a selection. Invert a selection. Let's come up to select in the menu bar. Since we're working with selections, our first menu bar item that we're going to learn is going to be select. We have three options up here that are worth looking at. We can select all, that's everything inside of the artboard. We can deselect, which simply removes our selection altogether, or we can invert our selection. Go ahead and click on inverse. Notice now how that's put a dancing dotted line around the edges of our artboard as well as on the inside. That means now that if I were to click my yellow paint bucket, it's going to fill all the areas except what was inside. It's the inverse of what we had selected. Inverting our selection has become really important here in the next few exercises, so get comfortable with inverting your selection. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z to bring it back. Now let's deselect. Let's go up to select in the menu bar and then hit deselect. And that removes our selection lines altogether. So let's get out our marquee tool again. And let's draw a rectangle somewhere on our screen. Now let's look at our option bar. Remember the option bar is the area where we can start to adjust and manipulate this shape to be what we need it to be. And the marquee tools aren't necessarily known for being terribly exciting. They're pretty utilitarian. They make square and circle selections if we need them. But let's look at these icons up here at the top. I think yours defaults to this first one. I call these the post-it note icons because they look kind of like post-it notes. And we'll see the post-it note icons for almost every selection tool that we begin to explore. Let's look at this first one. It says new selection which means every time I click and drag, it's gonna make a brand new selection. Nothing terribly surprising there. Let's explore the second one. It says add to selection. So if I click on that and I draw a new box, notice how it kind of eats away, I call it Pac-Manning, it kind of Pac-Mans away the selection line that was there and it kind of added to it. And I can keep going and going and going. Kind of making my own floor plan here. Now we have a much more complex selection than the marquee tool originally allowed for. And that's just exploring one option in the option bar. Let's go to the next post note icon. It's the stacked squares again, but this time it's a white square behind a black square. This says subtract from selection. So this does the opposite of the add to selection. When I draw my new rectangles, it eats away at that particular portion of the selection. Now this fourth one here, honestly, is really strange and I've yet to find anybody that actually uses it. It's called intersect with selection, check it out. If I have my current selection here and I draw a new box, which area do you think it's going to keep? Yeah, the area there in the middle. So it's kind of a weird way of thinking of selections. It's there if you need it. I never use it, but that's what intersect selection does. So we have our post-it note icons for our marquee tool. The regular selection, add, subtract, and intersect. We're going to be using those all throughout the next exercises. Go ahead and deselect for me. Select, deselect. Now, if we get out our elliptical marquee tool, notice how the option bar looks exactly the same. The post it note icons do the exact same thing. This time, however, we're working with ovals rather than rectangles. I'm going to go ahead and deselect. 
Now, if you ever wanna make a perfect square or a perfect circle inside of Photoshop, you have to hold shift on your keyboard as you drag. So as I start to drag here, notice I can make a oblong or strange looking oval, but if I hold shift now, it locks my circle to be a perfect circle. Same thing with a rectangle. If I click and drag and hold shift, it makes a perfect square. So as we move forward in our different selection tools, we'll very quickly realize that there are better options out there to make good selections, especially if we have complex shapes other than a square or a circle. But I can't tell you how many times I return to the marquee tool for just those really simple geometric selections. So practice this again if you need to, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial where we're gonna start talking about the lasso tool.